Hello everyone, you're watching the Help on AMA and today with us we have got at Atomic Green and Maxim is joining us from the business development side, he's also a co-founder. Um, Maxim, tell us a little bit about your own profile story and a bit more on Atomic Green. Hi, uh, first thanks for uh, letting me be your guest, I uh, yes. really appreciate this. Uh, so a brief introduction about myself that I've been to the cryptocurrency industry for around three years plus with the attraction in uh, managing the cryptocurrency related projects, like uh, starting from the layer one blockchain, then NFT projects, uh, the DEX, uh, like the, the bridge. Another okay. co-founder, Roman Saidulin, and he is also the CTO. So he has a broad experience, like about 10 plus years because he studied computer science in France in 2010 and something. I remember actually the, the, the year, but a long time ago. So it's pretty experienced in the things. Totally, just to give a brief background, Atomic Green is created and featured by a development company, Timeus Lab. So this is, this is where I am the biz dev as well, and the Roman is the founder. Timeus Lab is featured in Spain. Uh, we are near Girona, near Barcelona, on the seaside, a bit chilly. Beautiful. And yeah, and in the year 2020, Timeus Lab was acknowledged like an innovative company by the Spanish government. So we received some uh, interaction with them as well. But later the pandemic came and uh, it's a little bit on the standby now. From what I could understand from a basic glance, Atomic Green is a multi-chain platform for leverage trading built for EVM-like networks. Uh, but I would lo also love to hear from your side a little bit more about the company, what you're doing with it. Yeah, sure. So if you've done one liner, it's perfectly fits of what we're doing because Atomic Green is actually the multi-chain leverage trading platform on DEX. So it's not a derivative platform, it's the typical uh, and traditional leverage trading. So you can trade, you can buy an asset or can sell an asset at a fixed price if you want by selling it to the range. It was like a, a sort of limit orders for us on the decentralized exchanges done manually by us and by Roman. Who would you say are the key users right now? I would start that the DeFi have its um, very nice delights. Like it's 24 seven accessible, um, it's decentralized, nobody can block you. And so the users of the Atomic Green can actually be anybody who has a device connected to the internet and with a Web3 wallet installed in it. Because for example, Atomic, it's, it's not just the leverage trading, but as yeah. well, it's a lending protocol. So it's divided in two parts. The one is the lending and another one is the leverage trading. So the lending is basically can be used by anybody who knows to confirm transactions uh, in the MetaMask or any Web3 wallet receiving the okay. APR. And the leverage part, it's obvious that it's for traders, for the majors, for the semi-managers, for professionals, because it's very intuitive, the interface. I feel like in an always in demand space, like the one you're in, everybody sort of wants a piece of the pie, right? So in uh, keeping the competition in mind in that landscape that you play in, how does Atomic really uh, differentiate itself? Atomic Green is not a deriv derivative platform because for now in DeFi, there are several platforms that offer perpetual trading, but they, it's all synthetic trading. So they, right. have, they don't have their liquid order book, they use synthetic assets to trade. Yes, the volumes are very big, but they are different to classical real leverage trading like we offer. Once you trade on the decentralized exchanges or any platforms, once you need to transfer the funds to any address within the ecosystem of the project, I won't say that it's uh, really decentralized. It dilutes the, the meaning of the word decentralization. So uh, in our part, in the part of Atomic, uh, all funds that are traded, they are all the time, they are situated on the wallet of the user. So you don't transfer them anywhere. You don't have to make extra steps. Once the trader opens the position, the controller contract that controls the trade, the leverage trading part, it borrows the money from the lending pool and it mm -hmm. places it to the liquidity pool on Uniswap in the range which was uh, set by the trader. Meanwhile, this position is opened and it generates fees. We can okay. distribute the fees among the lenders, among the trader, among the platform. So everybody are in a, in a win situation. Once the position is closed, it's distributed and uh, it goes like this. 
What we want to do in Atomic is to start from the leverage, the classic one, not being the derivative, and build the system from uh, ground to top. So adding new values, adding new products. So Atomic is planned not only like the leverage trading platform, but as the whole ecosystem for the DeFi. At Halbon, our business is security, right? So I definitely want to ask you how you view secu security and what do you think of when you uh, go to an auditor and bring them on board? I would say, and I hope that it's uh, the same for every builder and developer in the cryptocurrency industry, that security is a top notch for everybody. So a, each project should maximally prioritize it. Because for example, if you are working with smart contracts, you need to be sure that there are not malfunctioning, there is no uh, any type of breach that in consequence can lead to the loss or exploit and the loss of the user's funds. It should be totally uh, totally reviewed and you, you can't let yourself to commit this type of errors. Yeah, a lot of projects, they make like the internal audit, but it's not the same. Like the third party is looking at your project from front to top, snitching everywhere, making all the type of tests, having not three, but six, eight, 10, 12 pair of eyes on it. It's totally different approach. And for sure, you won't miss a thing. In my opinion, running the security audit and uh, contracting a security audit company is, uh, is a must for, for every project and the DeFi especially. Would you say you already had this in mind as a part of the strategy, even while creating Atomic or was it an afterthought? No, no, it came before. So uh, before, not before we created Atomic, created Atomic we already knew that we need a very solid and reputational uh, security audit company to look through the project, to look through the contracts, to be sure that we can launch it to the mainnet and won't be afraid that anything can happen. Because uh, as you know, First you work for the reputation, then the reputation works for you. And once you lose the reputation in any hack, in any breach, in something, people will remember. Maybe, yeah, you can mitigate the, the consequences, but right. you'll still have this aftertaste. Reputation definitely drives uh, community sentiment quite a bit. Um, okay, thank you so much for walking us through Atomic, uh, like lending in your insights and telling us so much more about the project. To end with um, on this uh, note, um, if I could ask you a piece of advice that you wish you yourself knew before beginning Atomic, what would that be? You need to maintain the work-home balance. It's very important because nowadays, you know, that all boomers, zoomers, millennials, they, uh, they think that overworking, uh, multitasking, uh, super effective is good. Like where you have all the minute uh, doing the work, but you won't last long in this, uh, in this studies. So once you'll be very tired and overwhelmed, so you'll be burned. So it's very important to maintain it for everybody. It's different. Uh, yeah. there is no, like the, the golden rule you just need to find the golden middle. If you're a developer or you are a creator, you're a builder, or you want to start a project, you're an entrepreneur. The first and very essential thing that you have to do is to find the right partner. Because I know very few projects that have been run by one person who covers all the areas and is not delegating and is not, uh, not having any partner that can share all the risks and all the abilities and all the tasks as well. Yeah. So th there are unique people that can do this, but let, let's be honest, not everybody are like this. So you need of to course. find a solid partner that will support you in the, in the week moments that you have and you will support him in the weak moments that he had depending on how gentle and how humanly gentle you will manage your human capital mm -hmm. if you manage it good it can bring enormous enormous and and prospectus and it could be work very good for you and give a lot of benefits but if badly managed it can bring you such a disaster and consequences that you can't even imagine when you have an idea, when you have a project, build the MVP, launch it to the market, test it with your friends. If they will use it, make uh, like I call it the me test, uh, ask yourself, would I use this project? It, it, it's not obligatory that you answer yes. It would be better if you answer yes, because you'll be more passionate, more effective about this, yeah. but a, a, each answer is good.
and, and also test it, test it with everybody and people in your community that will give the, the best feedbacks for you. Probably you can't think uh, by yourself for everybody. So uh, when you have the idea, make an MVP and launch it to the market. Probably not to the, to the wide circle, but to your inner circle. So people yeah. can test it. You will know what you have to do later. I think uh, rapid prototyping and sprint testing are definitely two things that many startups uh, tend to err on. So great points in there. Uh, Maxim, I really wanted to thank you again for joining us on this chat and sharing your insights. Uh, stay tuned for the next updates. Thank you. Thank you.